You know, I'm just guaranteed talking about Browns, it. Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? Real Fans, Real Talk.com. Where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time. Tom, for the Tom. white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real Fans, Real Talk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the art. Even tell a neighbor, tell a Bobby sent ya From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about son Real fans, real talk dot com, I'm out one Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk RealFansRealTalk.com RealFansRealTalk.com What's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. We got a whole lot of sports to get into this week. If you guys are wondering why the stat man isn't here, we gave him the week off. You know, after the Rangers lost in the playoffs, he took it kind of rough. So, you know, we told him, listen, take the week off, you know, get yourself together, and then you come back next week strong and better than ever. But I will not disappoint you guys. So, of course, I've had the, 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 the original OG blogger on the website. Yeah, you know. Eric Sanchez, legend in two games. You, not to be confused with P.E. Kirkland. Now, he was a legend in two thank different you. games. Thank you. But we're talking you. about a legend in yeah, two games. Yeah, we're in two games. Baby. You know? But uh, we got a whole lot to get into. But before we do jump into the sports, you know, I got to take a quick moment. I, I put a video up on Instagram already. But uh, y'all know the boy was nominated for an Emmy. So I was at the Emmys, you know, this past weekend. Brandon Marshall was out there, you know, Mr. G was out there, all the heavy hitters was out there, you know, we didn't we didn't take it home, but, you know, I definitely, you know, got to thank the, you know, the, the, the Emmys and, and everybody for the nomination, and um, everybody that was just showing love, man, they were showing me a whole lot of love this past week all over social media, shouting me out, sending congratulations, so I got to make sure that I send all that love back to everybody out there, I definitely appreciate all of y'all, and like I said in the video, Real Fans, Real Talk, we're going to get that nomination at the next Emmys, and we're going to take them joints home, man. That's it. He's doing it real big this weekend. I mean, you know, I was real trying, bad, man. Dude. I was at the after party. I was styling them at the after party, man. They shouldn't have gave me all them free Long Islands, but it's, you know, that's that's, that's, that's for another time. That story's for another trick, time. You know, they wasn't asking about Serena. You know, like, you know, the moments they try to ask you these questions. Yeah, but what it what happens is I kind of am able to, like, kind of dip and dodge those things. I you. And, I, you know, I told them, you know, it was about the kids. And that's why once I said it was about the kids, they kind of fell back from asking right. the Serena questions. And I said, you know what? Not tonight. You know, another time. And, I, you know, I told him, I said, whoever, if you guys want, I'll do a little exclusive sit-down interview about the whole subject. And, uh, you know, we'll take it from there. But, okay. you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to dwell on it. But, you know, once again, it is definitely blessed. Had a great weekend at the Emmys, at the after party. You know, it's was, it was a beautiful experience. The Marriott was dope, you know, so... And a uh, shout out to uh, my my young boy Rich Kenny, who uh, he's the kid who's actually you know on the song and in, in the video that I was nominated for if I was president. So y'all could check that out. It's on YouTube. You know, just type in if I was president, and it says right next to it 2017 Emmy nominee. You know, so uh, just check it up. We might probably, I mean, you know, I'll pull it up towards the end of the show because we do have H2O in the building. So uh, once we get one of the breaks, and maybe we'll do that to bring Lady Boy God, we'll, we'll play that, uh, you know, play the video for anybody who, who missed it. Um, but, you know, like I said, H2O was joining us. He'll be here in a few because Balling for Peace is going down this Saturday out in Queens. It's finally here. We finally got the date back. So uh, we're going to be out there. We're all going to be out there. It's going to be a whole Real Fans, Real Talk thing. We're going to be all over the place on uh, Saturday. And Haran has a lot of hitters that's going to be in the building, you know, from Fresher to Gilly the Kid to uh, Maurice and Dwar, uh from the Knicks. He's going to be out there coaching. I think he got uh, Bianca coming back, my TV wife, you know, so she's, she should be back in the building. But so it's going to be a lot going down. Um, but we got the NBA playoffs that's yes, going do. down right now. It's basketball season. We in the heat of the playoffs right now. We got to start, you know, I mean, 
The Cavs have swept through. The Golden State have swept through. So we can't yeah, talk yeah. about those first. Uh, we got to talk about the game that's going down tonight because the Spurs will be missing one more key player. Kawhi Leonard is out tonight. Breaking news. He is out tonight with the ankle injury. Uh, I mean, they're playing in Houston. Yeah. I picked Houston to win this game anyway. But, I mean, now, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if the Spurs – can keep this thing close tonight without Kawhi. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be tough. I expect Houston to come out with a lot of energy tonight. I expect them to really come out and uh, put a lot of pressure on the Spurs because the Spurs really don't have a go-to guy now. Exactly. So I, I see this and one. And they don't have Houston. a stopper. Yeah, they don't have their stopper. and they, I mean, they run most of their offense through Kawhi. So tonight's going to be a little tough for them. I think Houston wins tonight, forces uh, Game 7. Now, if Kawhi is not ready for Game 7, uh, then it'll be unfortunate, but I would have to go with Houston <laughs> at that point as well. But I'm thinking so, yeah, man. You know, right now, I think focusing on tonight, I expect Houston to come out handle business tonight. Very tough loss in game five. They had a chance to really have a control over this series, and I expect them to win tonight and then force game seven and see what happens. 35 to 40 points for Harden tonight? Uh, maybe not that much, but I expect him to have a good night. I mean, who's going? You know, he's not going to have Kawhi on him. You know, forty eight minutes. Yeah, but I mean, he Pop, hasn't gone off yet in the series. Nah, nah. But Pop always, you know, he always figures out a defensive scheme. He's not going to let you just go off on him. Yeah. I think he'll force the ball into Eric Gordon's hands, into Ryan Anderson's hands, Lou Williams. He he'll okay. have everybody else get involved. Patrick Beverly, and he'll try to just make Harden a facilitator. Now, can Aldridge make it competitive? Because, you know, when we talk about Aldridge, it's pretty much hit or miss. You know, it's either he have a good game, then he might have two bad games and have a good game. So can, can him and, and Danny Green and Gasol, can these guys keep it close? Nah, I don't think so. I, yeah, I got I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's tough over it's sad, the course of a full game. I think it's very tough to see those guys. Yeah. The man who gave him what he had in limited time. Yeah. Danny Green really came on after Kawhi got hurt. Yeah. But to say a full game of that, I don't know. Minutes. I mean, LaMarcus does, hasn't really shown us does that. Does Ginobili have enough left in the tank for 48 minutes? I think he gave us everything he had in uh, game five. Listen, he might he, have about 12 to 15 minutes in the I'm, tank. I'm not going to say, it, you know, it rivaled, you know, LeBron's chase down block in the, in the finals. Stop. But Stop. it's Stop. up there. The block no. is up there. No, Come on. Not. With the it's left. Not. He blocked it, it on a I'm turn on a one, you know, with the I mean, left, man. The man who is a lefty, you know, that's the natural yeah, hand he would go with anyway. So. Is <laughs> yeah. that like he used the off hand to try to but, block it? But it was a block that saved the game, though, man. You got to put it up there. The game at you got to put it up. You gotta, it's not up there. All right. Where do you rank that block? I'll put that block probably, <laughs> all right, I'll give you a perfect example. That block is similar to when Tayshawn Prince had the block on Reggie, Reggie Miller. Miller? Yeah, that, the original Tayshawn. That down. was the original, you know, shout out to Tayshawn. Yeah. Everybody give LeBron credit for that, but, you know, Tayshawn, Tayshawn started had the chase original. down block, you know, and, and that was definitely a dope play. All right, so we put that up there. Yeah. All right, the so. LeBron one is in his, in his own know, that's, yeah. category. Because that's the, the finals. Finals. Game uh, seven. High game. Game you know, seven on the road. Yeah. You know, Eagle Dollar, like he's going to give you the layup to the lead, and then LeBron yeah. damn near blocked it with his head. So, I don't know what was going through uh, Iguodala's Dollar's mind at, at that time, but it's probably the worst feeling. He should have tried to dunk it. That's what was going through his mind. He, he should have tried to dunk he, it. He should have tried to dunk it, but, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? But um, back to the, to the Rockets and Spurs. Game six is going down tonight. We're both taking the Rockets. Again, you know, if Kawhi does not make it for game seven, if he's not back, Tough. then, you know, I got to take Houston. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they'll go on the road, you know, to Golden State. Um, Golden State, I don't think they would sweep either team. Oh, unless, you know, unless the Spurs managed to win tonight without Kawhi. You know, maybe and Kawhi was missed the entire uh, Western Conference Finals, then maybe yeah. they could sweep the Spurs. But I don't see the Golden State sweeping any of these teams. But how long do you think, you know, the series would go with, let's just say, with the Spurs and with Houston? I think the series goes longer against Houston mm -hmm. than it does with the Spurs just because style of play. Okay. Uh, Houston, they're up-tempo, three-point style. They could mm -hmm. hang with Golden State a little bit better, I think. The Spurs are going to try to exchange two-pointers for three-pointers, and then before you know it, it's a 15-point game midway through the third. Yeah, so, they, don't, they don't have enough. Yeah, shooters. they just don't have enough. I, I would definitely go Houston giving Golden State a, a longer series. And I got, I got to say this because, you know, early in the season when we talked about you know, Westbrook's teams in comparison to Harden's, and I was kind of like, you know, well, they're both equally kind of bad. But in watching, you know, watching more of Houston play, you know, 
there actually, you know, there is a, a, yeah. a gap between them, you know. So I got, I got, I got to say that, you know, I got to check myself, you know, and, and, and say that, you know, they they got a lot of guys with veteran, you know, playoff experience. Ariza has championship experience, and these guys are all shooters. <coughs> Excuse me, from Eric Gordon, yeah. Lou Williams, Ryan Anderson, Ariza. These are all shooters. So you know what, I got, I got, do got to have to correct myself, you know, on that. After watching them a little bit more closely, they do have a. a better team surrounding Harden, you know, than uh than Westbrook does they, in, yeah. in OKC. They they've just got they got the perfect uh, assortment of weapons yeah. around Harden. Yeah. You know, I mean you see those guys come down on a break and everybody stops at the three. Yeah. So you know <laughs> that's, it, 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 that's you know so, Ryan Anderson the other night they had a four on one and he stopped at the three and shot a three. So yeah. that's who they are as a team, but it, it's the perfect assortment. Reminded me of the Allen Houston days with the next one. He is going a fast break. Uh, I, I knew it was coming. I knew <laughs> I knew it was coming at some point. Well, <laughs> we just got 10 minutes into the show. He couldn't resist. He had to throw the jab at the Knicks. I, I was it was coming, people. Jab, we already you know, knew. We Houston knew. Was there. He we was, knew. That's what he would do. He would stop and pop. Why are we talking about Allen Houston? We, we used to call him stop and pop because he was stop and pop. We, you know, I'm just saying that. I, it reminded me. I don't remember calling him stop and pop. but uh, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> It just reminded me of the days when Allen Houston would get on the fast yeah. break and stop and shoot the jump shot. That's, that's all I'm saying. All right? But I do think, I do agree with you. I do think that uh, Houston versus Golden State would go longer, um, because I mean it's just I just don't I don't think that San Antonio has enough offensive weapons to to deal with Golden State to take them seven games. Just because I mean, you know who is Kawhi gonna guard? Uh, he would have to guard Durant, either Durant or Clay. I would say those would probably be the best situations for them. Yeah. I would, I and I'd have to go with Durant, and, and he's gonna have his hands full with Durant. So yeah. now after that, then who's going to match up with the rest and of these guys? And that's that's the problem. Exactly, because if I was sure of what I was gonna get from Aldridge, it would make me feel a little bit differently. But since I don't know what the Spurs are gonna get from Aldridge on any given night, I can't even give them that. You know, but whereas like you said with Houston, they have a lot of shooters, so. Yeah, you know, you might want to want to want to put Draymond on 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 James Harden, but you know he's still surrounded by shooters, so yeah. shoot, you know he can kick the ball out. So I that's why I say I, I would go with Houston in that in that situation, but I don't think either one of those teams is going to beat Golden State. Yeah, I think honestly, even though San Antonio's up right now, Houston's the better team in the series. Yeah, I think Houston let them off the hook the other night. Yeah. They're the better team right now, and I really don't want to see the Spurs just get dragged through a four or five game series yeah. against the Warriors. I'd rather see an up tempo team like Houston go who could at least make it exciting. Harden may have to go for forty five one night for them to win a game. Yeah. Then they might have to have Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon go for a thirty another night to win yeah. a game. But those are possibilities. I can't see the Spurs with playing two big men. They they love playing Aldridge and Gasol. There's and no way that rough. translates against yeah, Golden State. There's no way the that thing. can translate. You'd have to put, you know, all just at the five on a lot of those kids. You can't start them both because who 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 are they gonna guard? They can't guard anybody. Yeah, I mean it, it, maybe it, they can guard Patchouli, <laughs> but that's about it. There's I no, mean, there's nobody else on the you know on the in the Warriors ja starting Javel five. McGee maybe, but he's at, he's more athletic mo than both those guys. Yeah, exactly. So, so I, I just don't see how they could translate yeah. that. It's gonna style be, it's over. gonna be rough, but you know with the Spurs the, and the Rockets they can run. Yeah. So, so we going Rockets. Rockets tonight. And uh, coin toss depending on if Kawhi to be decided is, if for Kawhi game is seven. hurt or not. Yeah, I guess so. But I do have to say, I do got to have to commend the Spurs though. You know, playing without Tony Parker. You know, I, I didn't think it was going to be they were going to dominate like they did in Game Three. Yeah. yeah, but they they definitely came to play. I am I'm, I am a little disappointed that Nene is out for the rest of the playoffs because he was playing so well for Houston. You know, coming off the bench, he was giving them really good minutes. I'm you know, it sucks. But and and I feel like this is what this is what uh, what Golden State is used to though. They they're gonna either either team they face somebody's gonna be injured. They've been facing Utah, no George Hill throughout the, throughout the the latter part of the series. Now they're gonna yeah. either face Houston without Nene or they're gonna face the Spurs without Tony Parker. And I mean we don't even know how long Kawhi is gonna be out. We don't know if he's gonna be back for Game Seven yet or not. You know if he doesn't if he's not able to come back, let's say until Game Two. Of the finals, Next, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Like that, that could be really a, a really rough, you know, games one and game two. Because then now you still got to come back, you still got to shake the rust off a little bit. Because yeah. now he hasn't played in a week and a half, and 
the team has already, you know, been playing. So I don't every, think it matters though. You know, <laughs> I don't. Even if he was fully healthy, they it's can't yeah. hang with Golden State. Not in Golden State. Yeah, not in Golden State. Not going to Golden State. They so just can't. They can't hang with him anywhere. Again, the style of play is is, is just like boxing. Styles make fights. Yeah. And their style cannot hang with what Golden State's doing. Golden State, whether we want to admit it or not, they're a pretty complete team. They are. Durant, no, they are. Durant has are. changed a lot of what they that are. team can do now. Now they have a guy who can create his own scoring and is not just standing around the three-point line. Exactly. Steph loves to dance and dribble, but Steph is still looking to chuck up a 32, 35-footer. Exactly. Footer. He ain't going to Kevin Durant is looking to break like you that. down and then dunk on somebody. Exactly. And if he can't dunk on you, he's kicking it out. He's creating for other guys. So there's a different dynamic about that team. Yeah. And make no mistake, as you were talking about Russ, Kevin Durant ain't rusty. No, not he not came at all. right back in. He balling. So he did. He de he definitely did. So unless Draymond decides to go back to his uh, karate kid mode <laughs> and start kicking again, well, it, 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 I don't see nothing he, getting well, away. He, yeah. Well, now he doesn't have enough flagrance to for that to even take effect anyway. So he's good. He doesn't do a whole lot of kicking <laughs> in order for him to get out. Maybe he goes on a massive kick fest. Yeah, he has yeah, to every finally. game, twice a game. You know. Well, he caught a tech in that uh, Utah game. That's right? what I'm game saying. But, but only how many he got right now? What's that? Two maybe. That's what I'm saying. Like last last year, this time. He was probably like five in. Easily, so, easily. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, you, so he you know, needs a lot more. He does, Yeah, exactly. He's, yeah. he's calmed down. I mean, it's good. He needs to be calm because, you know, he can't afford to lose Draymond. Nah, nah, nah. I think he's the one guy who they can't afford to lose. Which yeah, is as, as crazy as that might be. Because, I mean, I got him. I, in my person, I got him as fourth on the team, you know. But they can't. He's the one guy who they cannot afford to lose. Yeah. He, he allows them to play small. Exactly. Because with Draymond, you can go with Durant, Clay, Steph. Exactly. And maybe JaVel McGee, you don't you don't have to really worry about having a traditional big man out there. Exactly. You can go small and do all the things they like to do. Yep. Draymond, I mean, Mike Brown's probably gonna coach them next series too, because Steve yeah. Kerr's still out. Yes. Yeah, the back issues. So I mean Mike Brown just pulls him to the side like a kindergarten kid and tell him keep your feet to yourself. <laughs> I think they'll be good moving forward. Yeah, he, he they, be they're good. good, you know. Now I wanna go back to the Spurs for one second because mm -hmm. um, you know, after you know, Cleveland Swept Toronto, and we're mm -hmm. gonna talk about. We got to talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, because you told me you wasn't gonna be impressed unless they swept through the second round. I too. was much more impressed with that. Yes, okay, I agree now, with that. Yep. Immediately, not even twenty four hours after the the Raptors mm -hmm. got swept, Kyle Lowry announces that, that yes. he's a uh, he's out he's exploring his options. Yep. <laughs> now, is there a chance that Kyle Lowry ends up in San Antonio? Uh slim. I think him. Opting out had more to do with the business side of things. Okay. He wants that large extension that could get him close to two hundred million dollars. Okay. Is he worth it? Probably not. He's already over Definitely thirty, not. so he's not worth it. But is Toronto going to be gonna, desperate? They're going to give it to him. Yeah, that's the thing. So I think that was more to do about business than hey, I want out of here. Okay. I think he enjoys playing there. They've had a good three, four year run where they've been in the playoffs every year, mm -hmm. and. Up until this year, obviously last year, every year they have progressed a little further every year. Yeah. So I think he enjoys playing there. but he's Drake's fault, though. I mean, <laughs> I think anything that Drake's involved with can't be a good idea anyway. You but know. it is what it is, you know. Yeah. He, he got his small ownership in the team and he wants to sit courtside. Exactly. And, you know, and go back and forth with the players. I don't know why. But as far as that $200 million goes, I definitely don't think Kyle Lowry is worth that. He nah. has not performed in the playoffs, like you said, on they've been on this three year run, and he, but he has not performed nope. in the playoffs. You know, I, DeRozan struggled in a couple of games in this series, but I will say for the most part, DeRozan comes to play. You know, in, in the playoffs as well. But I just thought it was funny that he he didn't even wait. You know, for yeah. a day like right after yeah. to uh, to announce that he was going to opt out of that contract and become a free agent. Well, I think I think he knows too. The writings on the wall because the GM came out the very next day and said we got to shake things up. Yeah, we can't keep the same guys in place. So I expect them to shake things up. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Kyle does leave. I just don't think San Antonio will be the destination. I could see him going back home to Philly. Yeah. Um, I could see him, you know, I could see the Knicks doing something boneheaded and going after him. And the reason I say it's boneheaded is because he's already on the wrong side of 30. So it would make no sense to bring him in yeah. at this point. And he doesn't even perform well in the playoffs, so you're going to bring and in somebody else. He's a small before. guard. I mean, small guards don't age well. Yeah. You know, so I, I just don't see how it would work. But and Philly would be a good spot for him because yeah. now you could bring in a veteran point guard to go along with Ben Simmons yeah. and Joel Embiid, you know, and the rest of those guys. So that, you know, that might actually actually work out for him, you know, to his favor. And he'd be home, like you said, in, in Philly. Yeah, Philly makes sense. But I, again, I think, you know, he wants a big contract from Toronto. If they're willing to give it to him, that's really going to be the deal breaker. If they give him the $200 they, million, they're basically saying we're staying with the same team for the next four to five years. 
and we're going to take really our chances. Which really doesn't make sense. None. Because None. you're not going to get out of the East with that team, you know, one. You know, you're not going to get past the Cavs. And, and guess what? The Celtics are coming. Then they're not going anywhere. They're a really young team. I mean, with, with exception of, of Al Horford, they're really young. Yeah. And if, you know, if they wind up with either Paul George or Gordon Haywood next season. Or Jimmy Butler. Or, J or Jimmy they Butler. Made, they make the trade for who's Jimmy. An option. You know, they're going to be a really tough team to beat for a long time. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in seeing next week the uh, <coughs> lottery is done. We get to see yeah. what teams are picking. I'm really interested to see where Boston lands because if Boston lands with that number one pick, which we expect. Oh, my goodness. This and is... they go either Lonzo Ball or Markel Fultz. And they're able to get Gordon Hayward in all season. Yeah, which they that, can. Yeah. And, you know, that's, they have that's, the uh, money that's to do. Brad, Brad Stevens. Yeah, that becomes a very scary young yeah. team with a lot of good players under mm -hmm. 30 years old on good contracts. Yeah. Yeah, because nobody's who's making money? Al Horford. Yeah, that's it. That's so it. they have a lot of guys the only one. under very reasonable contracts, under 30 years old, who all fit their scheme of what they want to do. Yeah. If they get that number one pick, I could see every top-notch free agent saying, I want to go to Boston. Yeah. I want to go play there with Brad Stevens and those guys. Because why wouldn't you? <laughs> why, why wouldn't that's you what in, I'm that, saying. in that situation? You know, while we're talking about, about Boston, completely destroyed the Wizards last night. Um, yeah. They're going back to Washington for game six. Who are you taking? I want to take the Wizards because I like the Wizards. I like John Wall. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain immaturity about this team. And the way that they... Was, they, was they, that on Kelly Oubre is when he trucked up? I mean, it, it <laughs> could Kelly be, yeah, but it's, it's a certain immaturity. I mean, if you look at the way they blew those first two games in Boston that yeah. they had leads yeah. on. You're absolutely you know, right. And then you dominate at home, so you think, all right, we got the game plan. We know what we need to do going on the road, and then you get embarrassed on the road. Yeah. So you there's know. a certain immaturity about this team. They're not ready to take that next step. So I can't really go with them in game six. I'm going to have to go with Brad Stevens in Boston yeah. and feel like they're going to close it out and then move on. If it was if, if it was closer in Boston, yeah. you know, last night, I feel differently. But, you know, I mean, they, they got destroyed. And I can't see this team now going into Boston and, and winning win the series, seven. yeah, I, I agree. I agree. There's no way. I, like, there's just nothing in my mind. Like, do I feel like they can win game six? Yes. But I, there's nothing in me that says they can go into Boston now and win game seven after, I mean, they've been demoralized. You got yeah. blown out, and then, you know, games one and game two, like you said, you know, with the lead, and then you lose the lead yeah. twice. And then you get blown out like this. And I thought it was, I thought they was coming back. I thought they, they was good. You I, know, they I played ball. Too. You know, even, you know. All of the, you know, they've been going back and forth a lot, you know, but they come back and then to go back to Boston again and get beat like this, I just don't see them winning, you know. Nah, I, I don't think, yeah, I agree. I don't think they can win this series and I'm not picking them in game six. I'm going Boston to finish this all it out. and Boston heads on to play Cleveland. Yeah, I, I think, I think I probably got it like 60-40 Boston right now. Going in, I think, I think Boston will close it out though. I just, I can't, I, they, such a disappointment, man. Such a disappointment. They, they're a young team, man. You know, they, they've got a lot of learning to do. Yeah. I think this is only their second playoffs together, yeah. you know, yeah, with, yeah. with this core of Gortat, Wall, oh, they, But they're going to be good for a long they, time. Yeah, they're going to be good. They're, they're going to be, be good, good, but they're not ready yet. They're yeah. not ready they, to I take that they, step. they need another, you know, they kind of needed, like, that Paul Pierce kind of player because I like when Paul Pierce was on the team. You know, they, they were pretty good. I think they need another veteran leader. You know, to for situations like games one and two when they have the lead and they're up, to you know, to just keep everything calm and 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 because you, you got to get those wins. Well, I have on one the road. For them. I've been trying to call their organization. I have a veteran for them, <laughs> and they're willing to make the deal. Who you got, man? Carmelo Anthony for Otto Porter Jr. in the future first. I'm willing to make the deal for you, Phil, because we know you well, you're sleeping right now, Phil. We understand this comes on listen, a little late for you, Phil. You sleep. Listen. It's fine. I'll make the deal for you. Otto Porter Jr., a future first. It could be top 10 protected. Yeah. For, for Melo. Melo I mean, gets his wish and goes play with a playoff team. There you go. We get a young small forward and a future first, and everybody's happy. Now, will they do it is the question. Because, you know. Well, if someone wakes Phil up. When we deal with the Knicks, Eric, um, you know, I feel like they have a knack for doing the opposite of what they yeah, should yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, I, and I'm trying to, you know, I really would like for them, because I, 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 I'm to the point where now I'm feeling bad for Knicks fans again. 
You know, don't don't feel bad for us. I but I do. And but it's, don't don't worry about it. You know, we're, I do. We're I, used I, to I this. really do. I feel we're bad used to this for abusive fans. relationship that we can't shake. Yeah, and I and I and I just don't understand <laughs> it is what it is, why man. you know it's like this I, because and I feel bad more so because of the city. It's a New York thing. Well, I'm starting to feel bad again. You know, so you know we it's man we we got we we might need to just go to the offices and talk to Phil face to face and see you know what is going on. But that wouldn't actually be a bad trade, you know, sending Melo to, to D.C. I mean, he, he, he was in, uh, in D.C., right? He grew up there, you know. Well, he's from the border. Well, he's originally from Brooklyn, but he lived down in the Baltimore area. Yeah, so he's from, so you know, it's, in it's the a DMV close proximity, area. yeah. yeah he, so, you know, you know so he's I'm cool not, with Wale and all the guys from down there. Exactly. So, you know, that's an easy transition there you for go, him. you know. Smooth transition, baby. Now, either way, though, Washington Celtics, neither one of those teams is knocking off no. King James. No. And no. the Cavaliers no. of Cleveland. Nope. And I want you to speak on this now because, you know, we had, like I said, we had this discussion. You said if they swept through the second round, then, you know, you'd be impressed. And then yep. we could kind of take it from there. So what are you seeing right now from the Cavs? I'm much more impressed with the Cavs style of play right now. Um, I'm a little upset at Tyron Lou because he hid that secret from us that they have been working on these defenses that no one has seen. So, Tyron Lou, I went a month and a half thinking you guys are struggling defensively, and then you oh. drop us with the bomb. Like, oh, we were working on some things that nobody has seen yet, yeah. and we were waiting to unveil it in the playoffs. And now that we've seen it unveiled in the playoffs, and now, I mean, mm -hmm. a couple games with the Pacers were close, but they were never a true threat. Yeah. And then you just straight just demolished Toronto. Yeah. It was, you know, it was really, it was bad in Toronto. I mean, when, you know, you're looking at LeBron James just doing whatever he wanted out there. He was just Toying did. with them dudes. You know, I tell you, you know, we, we spoke about this, you know, Chauncey, Chauncey Billups said if LeBron had spun that basketball in my face, it would have been a flagrant foul. Stop. Chauncey Billups full of it. He might know. You know, he's Chauncey, playing the Pistons. Why Chauncey Billups ain't slamming when he scored them 25 <laughs> straight points <laughs> to beat them in the Easter Conference Because he didn't spin the ball in his face. He, he said, might, if he, he stood there and spit with give me the basketball, he said, if LeBron it, had did this, and then did and it then again. Squared up yeah. And then and then shot in his face. He said it would have been a flag and foul. Well, right there and there. I remember LeBron dunking on Ben Wallace in that Eastern Conference well, Finals. That's big, that's big Ben. You know, he got a he got a. Yeah, I was supposed to be up. a tough defensive team. <laughs> Somebody should have punched LeBron in his hip then or something. <laughs> well, listen. They were nah, they, <laughs> they must have Chauncey, done something. Chauncey, up, I man. love Chauncey Billups, but he's just doing a lot of talking for ESPN. He and Jalen Rose is. is sitting there co-signing it. Yeah. Jalen Rose ain't do nothing when Kobe scored eighty one on him. Yeah, that was that was that was even worse. <laughs> Kobe you know? scored eighty one on you. You talk about what you would have done. Yeah, don't tell me about what you would have done. Yeah. Because nah. I will tell you one thing. Once Shout you out get, to them dudes though, because I like once them. Once you dudes. get to, to about thirty seven, you're gonna start getting some real hard fouls. They're gonna kick me out the game. Yeah. Because I'm not letting you put up sixty and seventy and eighty nah. on me. That nah. that ain't happening. Nah. Somebody gonna be injured before you get the chance to do that. I don't care. You can throw me out the game, whatever. But you ain't gonna score. No, 81 points or not nah. while I'm in the game. Nah. I, you know, and then talk to me while doing it. Exactly. He said Kobe yeah. talked to him the whole time. Yeah. It's disrespectful. And it wouldn't happen. <laughs> I would know. I'm not, I'm not playing that. I'm letting you know right now if I was on the court, you know, you once you start, once the numbers get up, I'm fouling you hard. It's, going, it's really going to be like the bad boy Pistons it might, on the court. Somebody's going to get hurt, but you ain't getting past 50. That's it. That's, it might turn into the malice at the palace. Exactly. Right you are not going to shoot no You're not going to have my family watch the sports yeah. center while you drop the 81 <laughs> on me. <laughs> it's not happening. Because, you know, I got too much pride for that. I'm not going to be embarrassed out there on the court. No, no. So, yeah, somebody is going down, you know. Yeah. But uh, but back to LeBron and the Cavs though. They know, they winning. They they going to the finals. Yeah, they, it's it's I a mean, wrap. You got LeBron out here, you know, dribbling, fancy shooting with his left. From, yeah, you know, it, spin come, move with a little come flow. Come on, man. Is, what are you? LeBron is out here styling for real. You know, you know, rest of these guys. You know, everybody's just just kind of following suit. You know, Chandler Fry, amazing series. You know, he's been shooting. Just, Kyle Korver yeah. shooting. Darren Williams got new life in them knees. It's you know. How is it possible? <laughs> I mean, Darren Williams got new life in the knees, which is just impossible in itself. <laughs> but how is it possible that Toronto made trades to make it a better series I, and ends up getting swept? Last year, at least they went six. That's what I'm saying. I don't. And they they actually handled, you know, Cleveland them two games in Toronto I don't, I, to make it a competitive series. And then now this year, you make the trades and then you you out of there. I don't understand it. Well, if it, here's the thing. They should have known better. They should have known Ibaka wasn't the answer from the OKC Miami finals when LeBron pretty yeah, much had his way with him. He was young. You know man. what I'm saying? And LeBron still having his way. And, you know, and, and it's, just, it's just bad, you know, all around. But, you know, again, I did, you know, feel like this was going to happen, you know, and 
That's why we're talking about teams getting beat down. Um, H2O just walked into the building. And, and it's, you know, when I see H2O, because I know he's a Knicks fan, it makes me feel, you know, good because I know we're going to have some things to speak about. He's over there smiling right now <laughs> because he knows I'm getting ready to go in, you know, about this whole Knicks situation because he's, you know, he's one of those guys that just thinks that the Knicks are going to beat LeBron in the playoffs and, you know, and whatnot, and they're just going to go on and it's going to magically, everything's going to be turned around. But, you know, that's not reality. You know, but what is reality, though, is that Balling for Peace is this Saturday, and uh, we're looking forward to Balling for Peace because that's when, you know, actually, you know what? All right, Haram, when, when Haram comes on, we're going to talk about this. If we could actually get, you know, some of the guys from Balling for Peace to go to the Knicks, they could actually win. And we're going to talk about this, all right, because it's a whole lot, that, you know, that's that's going down. But we do, <laughs> we're going to play this this uh, video really quick, and then we're going to give Ron a chance to get on the set. I'm going to save that for when, you know, H2O comes on the set because, you know, it's just it's fun for me today. I'm just having fun. And uh, so we're going to jump into that video really quick. Before we do it, let me just say this. If you guys are just t tuning in, Make sure you guys hit us on the web, realfansrealtalk.com. That's the website. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk. Twitter and Instagram at realfantalk. And subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. You can check out the interviews with my son, with uh, Kim Hampton from the from the New York Liberty. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the math interview. We got a couple of, couple of things on there, John Starks. So, you know... Subscribe, and uh, we're going to get to that video. Let's do it, man. What's going on, Chip Young? Real Fizz, Real Talk. I'm here with one of the legends in battle rap again, T-Rex. Now, last year you was balling. This year you didn't play. What was up with that? Man, I got a battle tomorrow. I just wanted to be comfortable, man. I'm out of shape, so I get on that court. I might have, you know, I would have played if it, if it wasn't the snow. You know what I mean? I'd have some time, but I ain't want to play. And then go to stage and I'll give them my all. You know what I'm saying? Who you got tomorrow? QB. How, how, I know QB. How we looking? 3-0? I'm going to beat her, man. I'm just going to beat her effortlessly. What do you think about, about uh, the, the yeah, intergender yeah. battle matches? No, no, <laughs> lyrics is lyrics, man. Performance is performance. So, I mean, come do what you got to do, man. It ain't no... It don't matter what you is, a female or a male. I mean, if you got that shit, you got that shit. Man, that's all. all right. Now, this is Balling for Peace. And I know you, you got the issues with NWX and K-Shine. Can y'all piece it up and work it out? Uh, it, it's peace. It ain't, no, it ain't no problem, but certain things just don't need to be worked out. Certain things just need to be away from each other. Just move on. You grow out of, th grow out of things, you grow out of people. You know what I'm saying? Call out. I'm not, you know what I mean? Ch Chime my brother of death, but certain moves that we don't accept in that mom. So, we, I mean, we're family. We move a little different, so... We doing what we doing. I wish him the best of luck. It is what it is, though. All right. So, then will, then will we see a card that's strictly NWX versus Dot Mob? No. <laughs> Never. Disrespectful. Dot Mob did too much for the game. What they did? We never get them the satisfaction to ever think that they can stand next to us. After QB, who you got next? Um, I'm in Canada, the 20th. Got Caustic in Canada. 26th, I'm in Rhode Island. 29th, I'm in CIAA, North Carolina. I'm moving around, man. The Dot Mob album is coming out. Me, Move, Dutch Brown. Name of the album is 1999. Follow us on Instagram, Dot Mob Music. We're making it happen, man. The official album, we working, man. Dot Mob, we in the building. Shouts to Tay Rock, Daylight Dan Balls, Real Deal, um, Star Smile, Shayna Ashley, Cooley Cash. That mom, that mom is growing because I remember a couple of years ago you said Shayna Ashley was going to be the last member of Dot Mob, but you've been adding new faces every year. I, I added new faces. I added new faces to the mob because the culture's growing. And, you know, a lot of kids can't relate to me. I'm 30 years old, so if you're 17, you might not understand me. You know what I'm saying? So. That's, just how I do that. That's how I feel about that. So I brought new people in, like shouts to Briz Rothstein, extended member of the family. So is he about to be Dot Mob? We'll see. You can't give us the, the scoop the, the, for, the, for the people? Can you let the kid of the man, Briz, be Dot Mob? 
where it's gonna be Cave Gang, Cave Gang Dot Mob Dark Side. Man. And last question, they had the um the, the greatest uh, uh, of Harlem documentary. Are you the greatest battle rapper to come out of Harlem? And if not, is it who who do you have to be in order to be the greatest battle rapper to come out of Harlem? To say I'm the greatest would be would be putting me against Mook, and I ain't even something I'm even doing. The rest of them can't fuck with me. I, but but as far as competition with me and Mook, I don't even do that type. Of shit. That ain't that that don't even exist in my book. I, I look at him as the greatest, as the moves he make and the small amount of battles he got. He make the most money, most viewed. They looked at him as they look at him as the king. Arguing back and forth with Drake, man, he came from the corner. So how you going not not respect that? You know what I'm saying? So I mean it is what it is, man. The rush the Mount Rush Rolls me move blocks. You know, I go with clips. Alright, welcome back. And um as our other extended uh family member Cortez would say, H2O, we got some things we gotta speak about. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, man? What's up, man? We finally are here. Yeah. We've been waiting for this. We've been pulling for this yes, thing to yes. go down. Bowling for Peace is back Saturday officially. Yeah. First of all, tell them where it's going to be at. It's going to be at Elm Corps, um Recreation Center. Uh, that's the, the address for Elm Corps is 107-20 Northern Boulevard. It's a legendary uh, basketball um, gymnasium out in Queens, New York. If you play basketball, you know, in, in uh, New York, New York, you would know Elm Corps. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be there this year. Um, it, it, I'm just happy the game's going on, man. We're going to be in the building. I'm Let us know who's going to be there. Uh, we got a lot of people in the building this year. We got a lot of females this year as well, too. You know, um, we got my boy Graf again. We got, um, we have, uh, man, we have, I can't, I don't want to forget anybody. <laughs> but, um, oh, Fred the Godson, Jacque. We have um, Smoke Dizza. We have um, signature female artist, pretty dope. Um, I yeah, man, it's it's a lot Too of many people. To name. It's so many people. Nah. We did so like I think we have more people this year than we ever had before nice. coming out. Now nah, I was gonna because I was gonna get at you, come on, because we talk about this. Oh every my fault, year. my fault. Um, my boy Maurice Endor from the New York Knicks. He's gonna be coaching the youth game as well. So yeah, he he gonna okay. be like, from the New York Knicks. Well, <laughs> New, New York Knicks. Well, listen. Let me let me let me let me say this because I had a question, but I'm gonna get back to that now. Uh -huh. Because now that you you know you did mention that, okay, I think that I'm gonna have to to interview him yeah. at the game. I'm gonna have to be the one to talk to him because I'm the only one who's gonna get the real deal. You know, Mark is a Knicks fan. You know, all these people are Knicks fans. Mm -hmm. I have to get the you know the truth of the situation, and I want to know from someone on the organization. How many more years he thinks it's going to be before the Knicks get a championship? I think that's the main question. Is it over or under 40 more years for the Knicks before Whoa. they get a championship? And that's the main question. I, mean, I think that has to be the first question I'll go. I'll ask him. I'll talk to him about that and see what he says. Um, is he going to be the difference maker? To over, get it, can under, he can he shave? Disrespectful, like can that. He yeah, shave, that was he, he real disrespectful. Can he that shave is, ten years off for the forty? Is what I'm asking. That's wild. I've so seen him. He does have some game. So the yeah. 30, thirty. I mean, I give him give him thirty. You know. I, I seen him. He does have some game. Now I seen him. I seen some. You know, I watched him play. You know, seen the highlights. Mm -hmm. So he does have a little game. He's yeah. six nine. You know, mm -hmm. power forward. Um, but he does play for the Knicks, and <laughs> it, that's the stigma. When you play for the Knicks, it's like you know how Jay Z got that quote: "I will not lose." The Knicks have "I will not win." You know, and it's and it's saddening. They're just a stench and, around the organization. Uh, you know, as the you know, and as the playoffs go on right now, you know, Ron, Eric, and I know you guys, you know, have big dreams this year coming in. You know, oh, we got Rose, we got Noah, you know, we got Courtney Lee, it's gonna be a problem. We got Brandon Jennings for cheap, and everybody was so excited and it, it didn't work out. You know what, man? Like it's it's a lot of pressure playing in New York. Okay. You know what I mean? It's a lot of pressure playing in New York. And you got to understand, injuries happen. Okay. No was out how many games. No, he was. He couldn't get in the flow of the game at all. No. Like he couldn't get in the flow of the season. Period. This year, I don't you know, know about that, but he he hasn't he, been in the flow of the game for three years. Yeah, now. I think Noah. I mean, the injuries the, the injuries contributed yeah. to the season he had, but he came out the gate kind of stinking it up. Yeah, and what I, when when you talk about the pressure in New York, I like to you know look at guys like you know Derek Jeter. Five mm -hmm. championships rings for the city of New York. You know, guys that, like Eli Manning, he has two championships for the city of New York. 
you know, even even the Rangers are one in the nineties. You know, the Knicks are you you still living off of Willis Reed in the seventies. Y'all got to do yeah, something. But that's about the, this. that's the organization. That's the front office that's more than friend. the players on the on the court. I mean, you have Don't, doesn't Golan Golan own he owns the Rangers too, mm -hmm. right? The, yeah, but but Glenn Sather, who oversees the the operations of the Rangers, does a good job of bringing in talent, yeah, and keeping acquiring him, talent, keeping developing him talent. Yeah, <laughs> he has out, not keeping him out. Of you know, business. he has not brought in uh, Dolan hasn't brought in anybody on the basketball side aside from really Donnie Walsh in the last fifteen years. We try, I guess yeah. you know he tried. He thought Phil was going to be the answer as well. Phil, Phil, Phil got to be around to make a difference. Though. He <laughs> thought he thought wrong in that regard, and you know, as usual, you know, the Knicks are bad, historically bad. When's the last yeah. time they made the playoffs? About three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, five now with the 2012-2013. Like fourth straight year, not making the playoffs. You know, um, but I mean, you know, you what? know I forget the, the that it's, year after that when they won seven. I just stopped watching basketball. Period. <coughs> oh yeah, and that, the Knicks would do that to you. you know? yeah, sometimes that's the best thing yeah. to do. Just turn it off the Knicks. Yeah. Just watch something else. Man. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, and, it, and it's and it really is sad, you know, Haram, because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this. I, I, I don't want no. I'm not, no, this is bad. I'm not trying to cut you off, but I'm gonna say this. <laughs> the Knicks are probably the only organization that gets ten new players and is expected <laughs> to win. Man, you get, right it's, it's chemistry. It's a chem being yeah. a basketball player. It's a chemistry thing. If you're playing like the Spurs, they can play with. You know, these guys, they like the farm system. They come up and they play through the Spurs organization. At the end of the day, you have to, you have to like, take the time to groom some of these players. The Knicks, look, look who left. Tim Hardaway Jr., look what he's doing in Atlanta. Um, they, they just give up on talent way too quick. So basically, you know, you know much like, you know, Shumpert and J.L. Smith, JR, they got their, when you just, leave and you get that Knicks stick off, off your back, you get a championship. But every, nah, but or you I get mean, to the playoffs it's, at least. It's, it's like Ron saying, you, you give up on guys so young, you don't really get up, give them a chance to reach their potential. Every, we talked about this. Every team in the playoffs has a former Knick on it. Yeah. Houston has that a is reason. True because you can win once you leave the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cleveland got two or three of our guys. Yeah, yeah they do. You know what I'm saying? Like every, right. every team. So Tim why Hardaway do these Jr. guys, why can Atlanta. these guys perform just not in New York? Cause, you know, it's my thing. That's what it's, I want to know. It's, it's, it's a win now thing in New York. People in New York uh, don't want to. They, they don't want to go. Long time. No, but, but that's what they do. They go and try to acquire new guys every single year to try and, to win. And like, it doesn't work. I and just. It doesn't work. Listen, I, I would have been happy, you know, because I looked at the roster at the beginning of the season. I said, I really w wanted to see we made the, the Knicks play the Cavs. We should have made the As playoffs. the season went on, I said, you know what? I just want to see the Knicks make the playoffs. Then I, now I just, you know, then we started talking about we wanted the, the, the Knicks to lose for Lonzo. You know I was that was for that. we were campaigning for, the for that. And it's and it's and it's and sad. And, 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 yeah. and uh, my boy Endor had one of his best games down the stretch, and and we couldn't even get the sixth pick. We lost that to uh, yeah. Minnesota. Yeah, exactly. So, my God, Maurice Endor, thank you, man. That's just you know you so, but you know we'll next, week, man. Maybe, like, next week maybe the ping pong balls will go our way. We can maybe. move up a little. Exactly, and that's what I mean. That's why I say, can you get some of the guys? From Balling for Peace to maybe you did <laughs> when they got to audition the trials for the Knicks. If you can get some of those, because there's some ballers that come out to play for Balling for Peace. Mm -hmm. At least, you know, get uh, Shigari, Scott, you know, Scott Scraper, get Scott him. Scraper, they yeah. could use a big man out yeah, there or something. Fact. You know, H2O, when you put up 62 the last game, yeah. you know, on, on, on what was it, 55 for 56 shooting, yeah. something like <laughs> 55 that. 55 for 56. Something, it was something <laughs> was in wild. the numbers. I don't know the numbers, but yeah. it was something like that. Or get Jim Jones. Jim Jones was out there balling better um, than some of the guys. Like 2K career mode, you know. Wild. You know what it was. The, the last my, 56. I don't know if it was that, but it was. It was. It was. I was wilding last year, and I, I had to make a statement game because the first year of bowling for peace, as Ant knows, I couldn't do anything. I put okay. so much energy into into putting the event together. Yeah, I had no time to be in in, in on the basketball court yeah. at all. I made. Getting I don't. For it, yeah, I getting prepped or even playing basketball. Period. I didn't play at all. I didn't yeah. play no basketball. Wasn't training. I was. Like skinny, and I, I wasn't, you know, I went out there and, and didn't do anything, you know. Um, and we spoke about and it, and we spoke because I was that, disappointed, man. yeah. You know, because if anything, I swear I would have came out if I knew he was gonna play that bad, mm -hmm. I would have came out and suited up, you know. But you made up for it, you know, yeah. last year, yeah. How have you been training this year? I've been playing, I've been playing because right, I don't want no excuses on the court. Because no you excuses. know, when you come back here after the, the, the game on Saturday, mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about it. I don't, I don't, and I don't want to compare you to the Knicks. Some people are saying I shouldn't play in the game, no, and I don't know. I don't no, know why. You I, have to play. I, I want, yeah, that's why they have to play. Remember, we had D Chambers here recently. He was oh, throwing yeah, some he, subliminals. He, 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 yeah. he challenged me to a three, yeah. three point. Yeah. That kind of scares me. 
it scares me because Chambers, he doesn't do anything that he, he know he can't do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so you think he's been I think he been like, out. I think he probably hired a you trainer and, and listen, getting some shots up. Anytime I call him, we on the phone. He's on. He's in the. Uh, he's in the gym and everything wow. now. So I'm saying you better watch him. He's you know, feeling like he's French. He feeling like he's French. You better watch him. You better watch him. But uh, yeah, I'm not worried about that. All right, listen now. I'm happy because now now mm -hmm. Haran came in here. He brought my media pass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, now so because I was gonna give you flack today because it's been three years now. You still have not got <sighs> basketball cards for myself nor the stat man. <laughs> Oh, okay, man. and Ladybug's in the building. She's getting ready to come out in a Where's second. She, at, she doesn't even have a basketball card either. We felt that you know a kind of way about that, come mm -hmm. on, because we you know we been we've been there from the beginning. We don't have a basketball card. This is and I know what it is. And you feel like if you give us a basketball court, we're going to come out on the court <laughs> no. and show off, and then they're going to think it's not fair like you had the game, Rick. And I told you before, because of the knee injury, uh, I'm not going to be able to get back out there like I used to. Because I back, set back. Well, yeah. Back. When I, cause when, you know, back in my heyday, when I was dunking, I was jumping out the gym. Yeah, yeah. You know? And this this trick <laughs> knee I got now, I can't even do That's why, you know, that's why I this do more knee. commentating <laughs> now, you know, than I, than I normally would. That's what they used to call you, AJ. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, yeah, you know? But I, I mean, I'm at a different point my life mm -hmm. now you know so i let the young boys go out there and do it that's why i just you know i say yeah, i'm gonna come out with the cameras mm -hmm. we're gonna make sure everybody is seen everybody is heard and we you know we're gonna you know do it like that okay but you hooked us up you brought the press passes out so now for access i feel good i feel yeah, good yeah, now i feel access. good now you're the you first know? one to have that man I exactly went, recognize first, who y'all dealing with hold yeah. on we always get the first on world fans we'll talk I, I will say that i will say that oh my gosh, H man. definitely comes through you know and that's why we always support him you know um Don't I'm not. Don't put. It, I'm not on live, am I? Oh, oh wow. man, we got Statman in the building. Statman, Statman is up. Statman, what up, man? Am I on live right now? You're live, Statman. What up? It's going down. Talk to me. I don't got any sound on this. Oh, uh, Stat, all right, Stat, we got Statman on location. Sh shut his mic off. <laughs> don't put me on live unless. I don't got you up there. Hold, up, hold, up, hold, up, hold, up, hold up, hold it down, hold it down. You know, but um, but no, you know, we're always gonna continue to support you, Haran. You know, we were really disappointed when you had the issues, you know, with the other yeah. venues and whatnot. Mm -hmm. We're not even gonna, you know, speak on it, but we're past it now. But you know, we always support you because we truly admire what you're doing mm -hmm. with the youth and, and the basketball camps yeah. and in the community in general and this is and it's not a it's not a one and done That's a fact. every year and you continue to grow continue mm -hmm. to, to you know with with the basketball the football games are amazing yeah, you got yeah. the back to school supplies then you got the queens week yeah you got the bowling and it's Yo, all man, love I forget, man i forget that you was able to come you was able to come to one of my last queens week that i did I we were listen yeah we was at the gym on st ed's in the bar yeah. Yeah, in the Bronx, and the hoops in the sun, like, yeah. you know. Well, nah, listen, that's, that's that's love, man. When when people are doing positive things in the community, you have to get behind them. Mm -hmm, and I say this absolutely. all the time. I cannot stress it enough. You have to support that because you know it, we need it. It's the things it. that we need. Is a need for this, mm -hmm. you know. And you and you can't, you know, right after you know all of the you know the police shootings with the stop the violence and and whatnot. So it, it, it's it's amazing what you're doing, yeah. and you do so much by yourself. You, right. I know you have a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Haran, you got to give yourself. You got to take the time to give yourself credit because you do so much by yourself yeah, to make sure that these things go <laughs> down because that's they're important for us to have these these kind of events and to have these people who come out. You know, the fact that you can get you know these celebs to come out because I could say it, you know, you could say it, mm -hmm. but people gonna listen when it's their favorite rapper, or their that's favorite fact, basketball man. player, that's telling fact. them, listen. Let's piece it up. Yeah, that's a fact. Let's put the, the guns down. Stop the violence. Let's mm -hmm. piece it up. Mm -hmm. And that's what you bring into the table. You got to respect it. You got to love fact. it, man. And you got to support that. Mm -hmm. Get those tickets if you haven't already. Meet us at the gym mm -hmm. on Saturday. I'm going to have my all access VIP pass yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> in the building, you know. But um, I where's Ladybug? Is Ladybug, is she coming? Where's she, where's she at? Where's she is she, at, is she coming? Where the, where the bug at, man? Are we waiting on Ladybug to get out here? We need, we need Ladybug. We can't... You know we can't we can't keep going without Ladybug on the set. Just mm -hmm. just come out here and run up and get on the set, man. But um, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's a blessing to continue to do these things and um to see people you know get behind my message, which is peace through sports. That's what Balling for Peace is for me. It's uh that's my way of giving back. Everybody has their way of get, giving back. They do their peace marches. They mm -hmm. do their rallies. They do different things. But this is my way of giving back. You know, and it's what I know. It's uh you know basketball is. 
uh, bowling. We got the flag football. Mm -hmm. This year, I want to do a dodgeball game too. So um, oh, it's gonna be we're crazy. gonna do okay. something different. You know what I mean? I, I love it, and um, I, it brings me joy. It's, it's like the same effort that I have on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. I put off the basketball court with bowling for peace, and that's what you know. It's it's from it comes from the heart. You know. Now who? Who's who's gonna be MVP at this basketball game? Who well, you got? Well, I'm not gonna, you know, cause last year if I if, I, if there was an MVP, I would have got it, you know, clearly, <laughs> you know, and people, I got, I got, I got, I got flack yeah. for, I got flack for doing what I do, you know what I mean? You Kobe them, you Kobe them. I got flack for, it and and people don't understand. My mindset is was like, man, I gotta come out here and show people why yeah. my name is H two O. You know what I mean? So, As you should. So that's what happened. You so know, I was kind of disappointed. Who could be a dark horse candidate that we probably haven't seen, that you probably seen behind the scenes? Like, yo, um, he, got, he got some skill. He got game. You got the young boy from uh, Christ the King. Christ the King, he going to be playing okay. the game. You know, my boy Disco Damo got problem playing again. Um, Big Shigari going to be playing in All the right. game. Now, oh, that's the lie. cheat code. Yeah, the cheat code. <laughs> okay. He, he, that's why he couldn't play in the football game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just throw seven, it up. Seven, six, seven, five. You can't. Oh, come no. on. What's up, guys? Shout out to Shigari, man. That's yeah, my yeah, guy. Yeah, man. He's a great, great dude, man. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, the game's going to be dope. All the games have actually been really good games. Yeah. You know, the first game went in overtime. We couldn't finish it. Yeah. No matter no, how the first game we did, because Jim Moore. Jones was about to set it off. Yeah, Murder Moon. We didn't get Jim Jones set the tone. He said security, everybody in the building. Yeah, we finished it. Nobody leaving until this game was with one. You know, but last year ended in a tie. I was, you know, I was a little upset about that. Yeah. I mean, all right, so we got we to gotta figure out how to make sure the games are uh, So we're going to be finished. on a strict schedule this year. You okay. know what I mean? Doors open at 4 o'clock. We have the national anthem sung by my boy Greg G. Then we're going to have the youth game starting at 4.30. Okay. I want everybody to come out to the youth game, too. Because, you know, to, everybody to come out. Because at the end of the day, they're all limited seats. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not there... You know, I don't want people coming to the door, so it is very important that you go to www.ballingforpeace.eventbrite.com, get your ticket. There are a few available seats left. Yeah. I don't want people to come to the door like, oh, I'm trying to, because it's not, you know. And don't think, just, if you don't have one of these, you can't just walk around anywhere. Uh -huh. You got to have one of these passes right yes, here. Sir. This is, okay, now everybody get these. So yes. make sure you, if you don't got one, you know, you better buy your ticket and stop playing. Shout out but, to Guns, <laughs> Guns Down Life Up too. They they the one who provided. Okay, the nice. Oh yeah. You okay. Know, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, they, they were at the at the football game yeah, as yeah. well. We chopped mm -hmm. it up for a second. But Ladybug is here. Hey, Finally, we lost you. We lost yeah. track of you. I didn't know what happened. But you know the fans. I, listen, I, if if I showed you the death threats I've been getting behind you not being on set. What are you talking about? Listen. I am here All on right. Thursday. I do my thing. You know, I have to do my rumor mill for the fans. You know, I've been I've been on a little hiatus. So you know, people got to catch me here now. That's it. You know, I kept this strictly. Real right, fans will talk now, you know. Sorry for Instagram on my Instagram fans. I'm on a little hiatus. I'll be back in June. I got stuff in June going on, but that's another story. So, the topic of discussion, the trending on all social media is Mr. Lonzo Ball with the sneakers and the deals and the endorsements and, and where is he going and his father and his support. And um, it's just been so much going on and uh, his life and there has been so many different inputs and suggestions and and before I go into some of them What do you guys you know you guys were talking about it earlier, but well, first of all I'm no, all... Let me start with with the guest okay, go, 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 go. with... You know, I'm gonna go in well my, my my um my perception and how I think about this mm -hmm. I think his dad needs to just be quiet. I think his dad okay. needs to let the let the young boy play because when he gets to the league it's gonna be a lot of haters on that side, just because and they might not even know him, mm -hmm. but in that locker room, he's gonna have so much heat, Facts. you know, because they're gonna think, oh, yo, he think he all this. Who you think sneaker deals before five hundred dollars sneakers and all that? Who are you? You know what yeah. I mean? They're gonna try to go at this kid and, and make a uh, make a, a, a statement, you That's know, a and make a, a point that you're not that good. So he's gonna get a lot of flack. I think his dad needs to just his best bet is to just mm -hmm. let him play ball, let him be the play that he's gonna be. And stop trying to be money hungry so early on. It's gonna come, you know. what I mean, at the end of the day, it's gonna come. But I, I, I kind of, I really feel that his dad needs to let the boy be a boy. You know what I mean? And then grow into a man. You know what I mean? Jordan is the greatest of all time, and he ain't charging five hundred for his sneakers. <laughs> Unless it's some specialty joints. The business like aspect that. of it, I, I don't. You know, I'm not opposed to that. Like you, you know, at the end of the day, you have to go above and beyond sometimes. You know, you got to let people respect what you're doing, mm -hmm. too. So I think that's dope. Like when Nipsey Hussle came out with that $100 uh, mixtape yeah. that was never done before. You know what I mean? And yeah. look who, who bought 10,000 of them. Mm -hmm. You know, just to jump off the wall like that and, and to do something like that, I think that's dope. 
But at the end of the day, it shouldn't be coming from his dad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Well, I, you know what it is? I, I I don't like the message that he's sending. Oh, you're not a big baller, baller. if you're yeah, not buying this. Who, 90% of the man. world can't afford yeah. $500 that's sneakers. A fact. That's a fact. You know what I mean? That, and, and the basketball comments, like Ron was saying, the basketball comments, his dad should just stay out of that. Yeah. The mm -hmm. business side of it, I respect his dad mm -hmm. because his dad been building up this big baller brand for a while wow. behind the yes, scenes. Yes, yes. So whatever you feel your product is worth, you have every right to charge that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, when, when Jordan was doing $100 sneakers, people thought that was crazy. Yeah. And now you can't get a pair of Jordans for less than $200. Yeah. That's a fact. So, you know what I'm saying? If his dad feel like this product is worth $500, it's up to I you know. to decide whether you want to purchase it or not. And I've seen him. I, honestly, I, there wasn't nothing really special about him. And I'm all for, you know, I'm, I'm all for supporting, you know, black-owned business and whatnot. But I just, you know, I mean, that 500 is, that's just a crazy number. They were, they were interviewing some of the top high school recruits in the country, and they was like, yeah, they're with them, but they ain't paying no $500 for yeah. them. You know? You this, but though. he going to say they ain't for you. If you ain't yeah. a big baller, I'm, it ain't for you. Not in your lane. That's well, the ones that's going up against his other sons, uh, Lamel, Michael and, uh, mm -hmm. and the other one. I like Lonzo game. But these sneakers better be tested. Because if he go out there and roll his ankle the first week of the season, oh, so ain't nobody rocking the, the Lonzo balls. <laughs> And that's and that's the reality of it. You know, easy come, easy go. The quicker you go up, the quicker you go down. Okay. So, you know, as always, I'm gonna keep up on that. Um, I just want to talk about this because you know this Canelo and Triple G fight, September, September. 16th, mm -hmm. is going down. And, you know, Mr. Oscar De La Hoya had to say his two cents on the deal, and basically, he's just put in his suggestion that Mayweather shouldn't even worry about McGregor. He needs to worry about whoever wins this uh, Triple G and Canelo fight. Now, how do you feel about that before right. we wrap up? We run it, we run it low on time. So I gotta get on it. All I'm going to say is this. Uh, De La Hoya need to stop Okay, mind his business. Don't worry about Mayweather. Worry about course dressing and all no. other issues. See why you got that you do this every Listen, time I bring okay, it up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but this you know, make sure you guys get those tickets. to Balling for Peace. Holla at H2O at H2O five. If you guys you know don't have the info yet, you can get it from him, yeah. or you can hit us up realfansrealtalk.com, yes. and we'll direct you to Haran. And once again, man, you better get you one of these because uh, we in the building, Real uh, Fans Real Talk, before, baby. Before we go, uh, Cliff wanted. <laughs> Uh, one of you guys to explain this real quick. Oh, I already know what's about to come up. Cliff, no, I we already know what's Cliff. about to come up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you he wants respect. to know where you they do that. He's more disrespectful for this, Cliff. Odell, get is that, that true? Odell? Get that picture off the screen. Right Odell, now. All I want to say that that is a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. That's real. That no, you wrong for that, Cliff. Cliff, you wrong for this. All right, Cliff. All right, all right, Cliff. Put it down. Okay, he just wanted to know. I got a trick for you, Cliff. He said you went Brooklyn where they do that. I got some. I got some. I don't know. We're going to see y'all next week. You're wrong for that. You're wrong for what you did. You're wrong. I don't like what you did there, Cliff. I don't like it. I got something for you, though. Okay? Good job, Cliff. Good job, Cliff. Thank you, 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 Cliff.